The superhuman benefits of a ketogenic diet have manifested in a variety of areas. From using the endurance benefits of fat metabolism to set records in a 100 mile race, to elite athletes like LeBron James using the protein preserving fat burning effects to slim down and become even more athletic in the off season, we've seen that there's a significant boost in performance, endurance, and recovery as a result of ketosis. One of the most common misconceptions of a ketogenic diet is that it's an appropriate diet for losing weight, but not for maintaining strength, building muscle, and boosting athletic performance. Jeff Volick and Stephen Finney are leading researchers in the field of keto-adapted athletic performance. They've debunked this myth completely and documented some of their findings very well in their co-authored book, The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Performance. The most talked about drawback of a ketogenic diet for athletes is that lean muscle mass production slows and muscle protein synthesis is negatively affected. This, in fact, couldn't be farther from the truth. Most of us are familiar with the positive body composition changes from the burning of fat for fuel in a ketogenic diet, but it turns out that the reduction in body fat percentage is amplified due to the ability to maintain and increase lean muscle mass. Volick and Finney state in their book that Evidence clearly indicates that a well-formulated ketogenic diet spares the body's proteins from oxidation. This is possible due to the fact that the structure of ketones resembles that of amino acids that are metabolized in a standard western diet, therefore are burned as a substitute. This allows blood levels of branch chain amino acids to stay elevated in a ketogenic metabolism. The misconception of a detriment to muscle protein synthesis, or MPS, is rooted in the fact that insulin is regarded as a key factor in promoting MPS, and as we know, without the influx of glucose in the bloodstream, an insulin response is not triggered. It turns out the branched chain amino acid leucine easily fills the role of the missing insulin and is able to promote muscle protein synthesis in its own right. This, combined with the protein-sparing effects of ketosis that upregulate leucine levels, muscle protein synthesis is promoted at levels just as high, if not higher, than diets that include high amounts of carbohydrates to stimulate insulin production. In addition, this lack of insulin response allows anabolic hormones such as testosterone and human growth hormone, which play a large role in exercise recovery and muscle regeneration, to be at an all-time high. Perhaps the most significant improvement when converting metabolism to a fatty acid fuel source is the practically endless supply of fuel in comparison to the finite amount of carbohydrates we're able to store as muscle and liver glycogen. When glucose is not directly metabolized to create ATP, it's converted and stored as glycogen in the liver and skeletal muscle throughout the body. On average, these glycogen stores can hold around 400 to 500 grams of glycogen to later be burned as glucose, accounting for 1,600 to 2,000 calories of energy. This is when we begin to see that this fuel reservoir doesn't begin to compare to the energy stored in fat, even in extremely lean individuals. Each gram of fat contains 9 kilocalories of energy, which is more than double that of the energy of carbohydrates. To go further, the storage capacity of fat is endless, and even in a lean 10% body fat individual, the energy available in the fat fuel tank is about 20 times that the energy of the carb fuel tank, somewhere around 40,000 calories. This expanded fuel tank rids athletes of the need to carb load and continuously provide nutritional energy throughout high endurance exercise, such as marathon running and competing in triathlons. Which is why, in the past decade, athletes on a ketogenic diet have emerged as some of the top performers in these ultra-endurance competitions. These next two ketogenic improvements to overall athletic performance kind of go hand in hand. They are the improvements in ventilatory drive and the production and regulation of lactate during exercise. One of the largest drivers of respiratory rate during exercise is the acidity or pH of the blood. The two pathways that increase acidity and therefore decrease pH are high amounts of carbon dioxide and high amounts of lactate in the bloodstream. During exercise, as exertion increases, these chemicals are produced at a higher rate than they can be dealt with, causing levels in the blood to rise and resulting in increased respiratory rate or hyperventilation. In the metabolization of fat, less CO2 is produced per calorie burned, resulting in less buildup in the blood. In addition, with much less reliance on the burning of glucose through glycolysis, 
Significantly less lactate is present in the bloodstream, making it easier to regulate respiration, or in other words, it's easier to breathe. I know I referred to these results brought on by the beneficial effects of ketogenic dieting as being superhuman, but in reality, this more potent, more efficient, and more available form of metabolism is a trademark of our human species. Perhaps these remarkable feats should simply be considered human, and anything less remarkable should be considered less human. If you haven't checked out other videos, go ahead and check them out on the Consider This channel. Right around the time this video comes out, I'll also be publishing a video on the detrimental effects of sugar, so check that one out also. As always, more videos are on the way, and feel free to leave comments about what videos you might like to see in the future. Until next time, keep going against the grain.